Welcome back to Combat Mission, where we're going to be looking at the quick battle for selector screen. What all the buttons do, what all the numbers mean, how it works, and a few little things to look out for. For this one, we're going to use Combat Mission Battle for Normandy because it's got all the features, and we're going to run through the force selection for a tiny quick battle to show everything off. And we're going to play as the defending Germans, so when we get to the force selector, it looks like this. The first and probably most important thing to do is to hit the map preview button over here. This will load up the map that we're going to be finding over, showing us the terrain, objectives, and the deployment zone. And because we're in the game, we can hit the conditions button in the bottom right and see exactly what kind of weather, wind, ground conditions, and in the modern titles, electronic warfare state that this battle is going to be fought in. Once we've got all this information, we can come up with a plan. This is pretty much the most important part of selecting a force in combat mission. It's generally a lot more effective to build your force around your plan than it is to build your plan around your force. For this example, we're going to keep things simple. I think the enemy is going to attack from over here, so I want to destroy him in the open space outside the village. So the bulk of my force is going to need to be infantry to fight from the village buildings and provide an outpost line, but I'm also going to need some anti-tank capability. AT weapons are an absolute necessity, unless you're fighting a battle where you know your opponent will only be bringing infantry. You need to be able to deal effectively with enemy armor because tanks are such a powerful asset. So we've got a plan, and we can make this plan as complicated as we like. Now we can press escape to get back to the force selector screen and pick the force to go along with it. Most of the screen is taken up by two boxes. On the left, we have a list of available formations, and on the right, we have the force that we've picked. Panzer Grenadiers are pretty good infantry. Each squad comes with two machine guns, and you can never have enough machine guns, so let's start off with some Panzer Grenadiers. There's a Panzer Grenadier Battalion on the left. If we double click it in the available formations box over there, it gets added to the activated troops box on the right. Simple stuff. But we're only fighting a tiny battle here, so a whole battalion is a bit much. On the left here, we can see our points budget. We've got 905 points to spend, but the whole battalion costs about 3,016, so we're a little bit over budget. This is very common to start with because we can only pick whole formations out of the available troops section. What we need to do is slim our force down a bit until we're under budget. To do this, we need to expand the battalion by clicking the little plus sign next to it. This shows the battalion HQ units, so the HQ team and the HQ support team, and then the units in the layer beneath them in the C2 chain, the individual companies. We also get the points breakdown for each company and can see that they're all around about 700 points. We're going to need some other units for this battle too, so we're probably going to be using just that one company as the core of our force. To get rid of the others, all we have to do is click on them to select them, then click the delete button at the bottom. This grays them out. We can always reselect them and revive them the same way to bring them back later if we need to. That brings our points under budget, so it's gone green again. We've also only got one company, so if we think about the chain of command, we don't really need the battalion commander along for this. He's not going to be doing very much. So we can select him and the HQ support team and delete them too to free up some more points. Now that we've got our core force, we can expand the company and the platoons to see exactly what we've got. So three Panzer Grenadier platoons and a weapons platoon with machine guns and mortars. This is a lot of anti-infantry firepower, but we don't have any anti-tank weapons. The Panzer Grenadiers might be carrying a couple of Panzerfausts per squad, but I don't really want to rely on just them. So we need to add in some anti-tank capability. There are a couple of ways for us to do this. Some formations have alternate organizations, and the Panzer Grenadiers are one of them. If we select a squad, we can see at the bottom that it's a motorized rifle squad, and we can choose whether it's using the standard organization or if it has a Panzer Shrek. These different organizations work in different ways depending on the formation. British sections or American squads with the anti-tank option simply give a designated soldier the Piet or Bazooka, respectively. Panzer Grenadiers are a little different. Selecting the Panzer Shrek option 
basically adds a two-man anti-tank team with the Panzerschreck to the squad. So if we take the Panzerschreck option for this squad, it jumps up in price quite a bit. There are also some changes on either side of that points value. We can see it changes from standard to uncommon on the left, and jumps from zero to about 245 on the right. This is the rarity of that unit. Rarity is a kind of parallel points value that all units have that reflects how historically common they were. This can change with the date, because obviously units come into service at different times and at different rates, but essentially it's a means of making battles more historically accurate and keeping the wackiness level down. Panzerschrecks weren't all over the place in Normandy 44, and they were much more likely to be found in small specialist teams than they were bolted directly onto Panzergrenadier squads. If we select the whole company by clicking on the blue text at the top, we could change all of the squads to include Panzerschrecks, but this would knock us way over our rarity budget. So for now we're going to stick with the standard Panzergrenadier squads. We can still attach Panzerschreck teams though. On the left, under the map preview button, we have a drop down menu which we can use to change the available troops box between whole formations, specialist teams, or single vehicles. If we go for specialist teams, we can see Panzerschreck teams in the list. The cost is a bit different. Although Panzerschrecks are still uncommon, they're less uncommon when they're operating as specialist teams, and we can double click on them to attach them to our force. What's important to bear in mind when adding units into a formation like this is that they'll be attached to whatever sub-formation you have selected at the time. So if we have first platoon selected, as indicated by the little yellow arrow, the team will be incorporated into first platoon and be in the chain of command under first platoon's leader. We could attach them to other platoons, or we could attach them to the company itself, in which case they would report directly to the company commander. This is important to consider because of the way Combat Mission C2 chains and communications work. If we want to beef each platoon's AT ability up, it would be best to attach the Panzerschreck teams directly to them. If we're going to have a couple of roving Panzerschreck teams firefighting enemy armour, then they might be better off being attached at company level. The same thing applies to single vehicles, but if we select that tab now, the only thing we can choose is the Kubelwagen. That's probably not going to be very useful, but the reason we're seeing that is because we're currently only looking at units available to the German infantry. On the bottom, on the left, we've got options for the different available branches. We've got infantry selected right now, but if we click on armoured infantry, for example, we get a lot more options. That's because, obviously, armoured infantry have access to half-tracks and armoured cars and all kinds of fun stuff. I don't think we need any half-tracks for this battle, but it's always a good idea to bring a tank, which we can find in the armour branch. This is a bit more like it. In fact, there are too many choices to fit in the box, so we can go up and down the pages by using the little red arrows up on top. Naturally, the first thing almost everybody does is look for the Tiger, but both variants available are over our rarity budget, so they're out. The only thing with some anti-tank punch we could really go for right now is a Marder, which is basically a pack 40 75 mil gun on tracks, but as a tank destroyer it isn't all that useful for anything else, and with a tiny budget, over-specialisation is probably a bad move. So, we can delete something else to free up points for something a bit meatier. Getting rid of one of the MG sections and a Panzergrenadier platoon gives us enough points left over to bring a Panther, which would be fantastic. But it would pretty much tie up the rest of our budget in one vehicle that could be lost or disabled by a single lucky hit. This is where force selection starts getting into the realm of tough decisions. It might be better to take a cheaper but less capable Panzer IV, but add some more Panzerschreck teams in. Or it might be better to sack tanks off completely and take an AT gun and some mines from the fortification branch. The last element to bear in mind is that the soft factors for the units can be altered as well. If we look at the Panzer Grenadier squads, we can see that they all have slightly different points cost out of the box. And if we click on them and look down at the bottom, we can see that some are veterans, some are regulars, some are green, some have leadership modifiers, and they have different levels of motivation. These are generally set at typical levels when you pick units, which depend on the date, what kind of unit it is, what branch it is, etc. 
So, for example, airborne troops tend to be better trained and more highly motivated than regular infantry. Tweaking these soft factors to min-max the points or change the nature of your force completely is always an option. Is it better to have a compact but highly trained force? Is it better to have a huge conscript force? If your plan relies heavily on one individual unit, like an expensive tank, is it worth making some sacrifices elsewhere so you can bump up its experience and leadership? Broadly speaking, going up or down in any of these categories adjusts the points and rarity values by 10%. You can do it en masse for platoons, companies and battalions by selecting the top of the C2 chain. Down in the same area, you can change the appearance for your units too, if there are options available. Here, for example, we can switch between the standard German infantry uniforms or the mixed variant, which incorporates a bit of camo here and there. And that's about it. The easiest way to get to grips with the force selector is to just play some quick battles. This has the added benefit of helping you get to know the units and what they're capable of. A couple of other points to note are that you can always press the suggestions button to get started or let the game pick your force for you, although you're not likely to get a good selection by doing this. You can disable the map preview in the quick battle setup screen if you want to make things a bit more interesting and less gamey. You can also adjust how strict the rarity values are or whether they're there at all. And if you really want, you can go through all of your units and rename them. Finally, if we press the spacebar, we can see which units and formations are associated with each module, which is really important when you're playing multiplayer if you and your opponent don't have the same modules installed and you need to make sure that you don't pick something they don't have so the game actually works. That's about it then. A quick guide to the force selector. It's a little intimidating at first and there's some stuff I haven't covered, but this is enough for people to get the grips with. Hope you all enjoyed this and found it interesting. I'll catch you in the next video.